Okay, so from today on, we're gonna start all chapter six. Chapter six is about ratios and percents. Okay, so let's have a look at question one. The ratio of boys to girls in a math class is three to four. Question A, what is the ratio of girls to the total number of students in this class? Okay, <clears throat> you can think of this question like this. So, because you know that the ratio of boys to girls is three to four, right? So suppose, the number of boys is 3K. Then what is the number of girls here? Then we know that the number of girls is 4K, right? Because 4K to, uh, sorry, uh, because 3K to 4K is three to four, right? Okay, so suppose the number of boys is 3K, then you know that the number of girls is 4K. Then the total number of students is how many? Should be 3K plus 4K, right? So we know that for question A, the ratio of girls, which is uh, the ratio of girls to the no total number of students should be 4K over 3K plus 4K, right? Which is 4K over 7K, which is four over seven. Of course here, K is not zero, right? Okay, any questions? Okay, so question B, if the total number of students in this class is 84, how many girls are there in this class? Okay, so we know here, these are the boys and these are the girls. Okay, the ratio of boys to girls is three to four. <clears throat> and the ratio of girls to the whole class is four over seven, right? And we know that total number of students is 84. So 84 times the ratio of girls to the whole class. This should be a number of girls there, right? So this is four by 12, which is 48. So we can make the conclusion now. <clears throat> There are 48 girls in this class. Okay, any questions? No, okay, let's see question two. Nine out of every 11 dentists in my city say you should not eat candy and the rest say it's okay to eat candy. 18 dentists in my city said that it's okay to eat candy. How many dentists are in my city? Okay, so we can use <clears throat> the equation method to solve this question. The quantity we want to know is the number of dentists, right? Okay, so suppose the number of 
dentist in my city is x and x is quantity that we want to know right then we know that there are 18 who say it's okay to eat candy right so those for those who says okay to eat candy number of dentists is 18 right okay for those who say should not eat candy So how many dentists are there in this type? Okay, total number is X subtracted by those who say it's okay. This is the number of the dentists who said you should not eat candy, right? And we also know that their ratio, <clears throat> nine out of every 11 dentists. So that means the number of the dentists who say you should not eat candy over the total number of dentists, which is X, right? This ratio equals nine out of 11. So here we have one variable and one equation. We should be able to solve it, right? Okay, according to the multiplication, cross multiplication method, we have 11x minus 18 times 11 equals 9x. Okay, so that means 2x equals 18 times 11, right? Okay, so this gives us x is 9 times 11 which is 99. X is 99, that means the total number of dentists in my city is 99, right? So, okay, let's make the conclusion. Conclusion is there are 99 dentists in my city. Okay. Any questions? Have a look at this. <clears throat> no? Okay, let's see the next one. A pet store has only dogs, cats, and mice. The ratio of dogs to cats to mice is 2 to 3 to 30. Hey, what is the ratio of the number of cats to the number of animals in this store? B, if there are 385 animals in this store, how many cats are there in the store? <clears throat> okay. So here we know the ratio of dogs to cats to mice, right? Suppose the number of dogs <clears throat> is 2K. Why we use 2K here? Because the ratios is two to three to 30, right? Of course you, you can use K here does not matter. 2K can make the whole problem much simpler. <clears throat> so suppose the number of dogs is 2K. Then what is the number of cats here? Then the number of cats should be 3K, right? 
because we know that the ratio of dogs to cats is two to three. If dogs is 2K, the cats must be 3K, right? So follow the same principle, the number of mice. What is the number of mice? It should be 30K, right? Then only in this way, the ratios of dogs to cats to mice is 2K to 3K to 30K, which is two to three to 30, right? <clears throat> Okay, so the ratio of the number of cats to the number of all the animals is, okay, we already know that number of cats is 3K, right? And the number of all animals, we can just add these numbers up, right? Which is, 36K. Okay, so we can easily find that number of cats to all animals is 1 to 12. Correct? Uh, sorry, this is not 36, it should be 35. <clears throat> So number of cats to number of all animals is three to 35, right? Okay, so this is our solution for the first question. Second, if there are 385 animals in the store, so 385 total number of animals times the ratio of cats to all animals, which is three to 35, this should be the number of cats, right? So here we get one, one, which is 11 times three, which is 33. Okay, so the conclusion is there are 33 cats in the store, right? Okay, have a look at this. Any questions? <clears throat> Again, of course, here K is not zero. No questions? All right, let's see the next one. What is the ratio of X to Y if given the following relationship between X and Y? So here we want to find X over Y, right? We want to find this value. So this is a ratio of X to Y. So how do we get this? The only information here is <clears throat> 10X minus 3Y over 13X minus 2Y is three over five. So we should derive the ratio of X to Y from this given information, right? Okay, so <clears throat> what do we hear? What do we have here? From this equation, we can get by cross multiplication, we know that five times 10 X minus three Y equals three times 13x minus two y, right? <clears throat> and they should expand everything, then get 50x minus Fifteen Y 
equals 39x minus 6y, right? Okay, so let's put x to the left hand side, which is 11x, and put all the y's to the right hand side, which is 9y, right? So now we have this relationship. How do we get x over y? Again, we can use cross multiplication method, right? We can put 9y to the left hand side of the equation. So basically this tells you 11x over 9y is one. And you can time nine over 11 to both sides of the equation. So this will give us x over y is nine over 11, right? <clears throat> okay, so this is our final solution. Okay, have a look at this. Any questions? No? Okay, let's see the next one. Okay, next. Actually, there are two methods we can use to solve the next question. Okay, let me show you method one first. Okay, what we have known here. We know that x over y is two over three, right? And we also know that y over z is seven over five, right? And we want to know z over x. So have a look at this. How do we get z over x? Suppose we label these two equations with one and two. How do we get z over x? <clears throat> or in other words, how do we get X over Z? Either one is okay, right? If we get this one, you can just use its reciprocal to get Z over X, right? Okay, so how do we get Z over X or X over Z? We can simply use equation one time equation two, right? So this will give us left hand side times left hand side, which is x over y times y over z. Now you can see that can be canceled with, uh, y can be canceled with y. And then we can get x over z, right? Okay, right hand side times right hand side. Okay, so this means x over z is 15 over, uh, sorry, 14 over 15, right? So we don't want x over z, we want z over x. So of course, z over x is the reciprocal of this number here, right? Okay, so z over x is 15 over 14. Okay, any questions? This is the, uh, this is the first method. We can call this uh, elimination method, right? Because by multiplication, we can eliminate the variable y here. Okay, and let's have a look at Another method. Method two, we can use actually substitution method.
By substitution, I mean, we already know that the ratio between y and z is seven over five, right? And here we want to know that z over x. If we can substitute y here with something x, we then can find the ratio between x and z, right? So the key is to substitute y using x, okay? I'm gonna write it here. The key is to substitute y using x. So how do we do this? We do this according to the relationship given here, right? Okay, suppose we denote this equation with a letter A. And the second equation here using a letter B. Okay, from equation A, we know that x over y is two over three. This tells us that 2y equals 3x, right? Because we want to substitute y using x. So we need to solve y in terms of x. y is 3x over 2, right? So well, let's call this c. Then we can put c into b, right? So in this way, we can substitute the y using 3x over 2. Okay, so y over z means 3x over 2 and then over z equals 7 over 5, right? So this means 3x over 2z is five, uh, 7 over 5. Then by simplification, we know that x over z is 7 over 5 times over three, which is 14 over 15. Again, here we know that x, a z over x is of course the reciprocal number, right? Which is 15 over 14, okay? Have a look at this. You can choose either method you like, either method you feel comfortable to complete this question. Okay, any questions? All right, if you don't have any question, let's have a look at question six. Laco has a bag that holds only green marbles and red marbles. The ratio of green marbles to the number of marbles in the bag is two over five. If the Laco has four green marbles and takes out 10 red marbles, there will be twice as many green marbles in the bag as red marbles. How many marbles were in the original bag? Okay, so here we have a bag and there are some red marbles and some green marbles, right? So suppose, okay. What is the question here? The question is, we want to know the quantities of the red marbles and green marbles in the original bag, right? We do not know the quantities. So we can use two letters to denote these two unknown quantities. So let me use R 
denote the number of red marbles. in the original bag. And G for green marbles. Okay. So we need to solve these two variables. Ideally, we need two equations, right? The two equations should come from the given information. So what is the given information here? First piece of information is two over five, right? What is two over five? Two over five, two over five is a ratio of green marbles, which is G over the total number of marbles, which is R plus G, right? This number is two over five. Okay, this is our first equation. Can we find another equation here? Of course, because the second piece of information, we haven't used it yet, right? Second piece of information tells us if Vilaco has four green marbles, so that means green added by four, and then takes out 10 red marbles, takes out is R subtracted by 10, right? And there will be twice as many green marbles as red marbles. So we know that this ratio is one over, uh, this ratio is two over one, right? Because it says twice as many green marbles as red marbles, okay? So here we have two variables and two equations. So we should be able to find the two variables here, right? Okay, so let's have a look at how do we solve this equation. Actually, we have learned how to solve this system of equations, right? Okay, so first of all, let's try to simplify this system. Okay, by cross multiplication, we know that 5g is 2r plus 2g. Okay, second equation tells us g plus 4 equals 2r minus 20, right? Okay, so suppose this is one, this is equation two. Then from equation one, we know that 2r is 3g, right? Okay, let's label this with three. Then we can actually put three into equation two. This will give us G plus 24 equals two R. Two R is actually three G, right? So this tells us two G equals 24. That means G is 12, right? So let's label this with four. Then we can put equation four into equation three. And then we know 2R is 3G, which is three by 12, okay? So then we can solve R is three by six, which is 18, correct? Okay, so that means number of green marbles, 12. Number of red marbles is 18. Okay, so now we can make the conclusion. In the original bag, there are 18 red marbles and 12 green ones, right? Okay, have a look at this. Do we have any questions?
<coughs> okay, if you don't have any questions, <coughs> let's have a look at question seven. Okay, a one foot is 12 inches. How many feet are in 60 inches? Okay, so here actually, there are many methods to solve this question. So suppose we do not know this number and let x denote the number of feet in 60 inches. And actually we want to solve the x here, right? Okay, so we know that one foot is 12 inches. And we want to know X, but we also know that X feet is 24 inches. And we want to solve X here, right? Okay, so from the second equation, we know that X feet over 60 inches is one, right? Okay, so also we know that one foot over 12 inches is also one, right? So from this equation, we can solve the X here, right? Okay, so this tells us X is one foot times 64 inches over 12 inches. Okay, so here of course, the same unit can be canceled with each other, which are uh, inches, right? So the only unit here left is foot or feet. And here we know that the number here should be 64 over 12. which is approximately 3.28 feet. Okay. Any questions here? No? Okay, so let's have a look at question B. There are approximately four or five, four grams in a pound. How many grams are there in 0 0.35 pounds? So again, let me use a letter Y here to denote the number of grams or we can actually write it like this. I suppose 0 0.35 pounds equals Y grams. Okay, so from the given information that we know the ratio between pounds and grams is 454 four grams over one pound. This is a ratio between gram and pounds, right? So this ratio should be equal to Y grams. This is when we have Y grams. When we have Y grams, we will have 0 0.35 pounds, right? Note that these two ratios should equal. Okay, so this tells us Y is four, 
five four grams times zero point three five pounds over one pound. All right? Of course, here the two pounds. can be canceled with each other. What's left there is only a unit of grams. So 454 times 0 0.3435 is approximately, uh, sorry, I made a mistake here. Uh, okay, let's finish this first. It's approximately 159 grams. Okay, for the first question, I made a mistake. This is not 3.28. This is uh, actually 16 over three feet, right? Okay. For the second one, we use approximation. It's approximately 159 grams. All right? Any questions? Have a look at this. This is very important. You should be able to convert from one unit to the other, okay? This is only example. There are a lot of unit conversion exercises. For example, you should, you should be able to convert length, weight, or areas, or something else, okay? If you don't have any questions, let's have a look at next one. Okay, again, this is a unit conversion problem. There are approximately 3.28 feet in a meter. Determine to the nearest square root, square foot, how many square feet there are in 28 square meters. Okay, so how do we solve this question? Okay, we know that 3.28 feet is approximately 1 meter, right? So, okay, so that means if we square both sides, of the equation, we will get 3.28 squared square feet equals one square meter, right? Okay, so that means 3.28 square, square feet over one square meter should equal x square feet over 28 square meters, right? Because the ratio of square feet over square meters should be constant, right? So if we have 3.28 square feet, uh, sorry, 3.28 square 
square feet per one square meter. Then this ratio should equal to X square feet over 28 square meters, right? So we can easily solve X here. X is 3.28 squared square feet times 28 square meters. over one square meters. Okay, so what is the result here? Okay, this time we need to use a calculator. 3.28 times 3.28 times 28. Result is 301.2352. The units should be square feet, right? Okay, and it asks us to round it to the nearest square foot. So this is approximately 3.1 square feet, okay? Any questions? Um, this is our final solution here. Okay, any questions? Okay, if you don't have any questions, let's have a look at question nine. Dr. Khan has ordered a special medicine from Europe. It comes with strict instructions to use 32 millimeters per kilogram that the patient weighs. However, all of Dr. Khan's scales only tell weight in pounds. There are approximately 0 0.4536 kilograms in pound to the nearest 0 0.1 millimeter. How many millimeters per pound should Dr. Khan use? Okay, so here it's a common problem that if you go to Europe, sometimes you use different metrics than in the North American, right? So here we want to convert millimeters per kilogram to millimeters per pound, right? Okay, so how do we do this? Okay, the instruction says we shall use 32 millimeter, uh, sorry, millilit milliliter per 
kilogram. This is according to the instruction, right? We want to convert it to milliliter per pound. That means we need to convert the kilogram to pound, right? We need to know how many pounds are there in one kilogram, right? Okay, so suppose there, uh, suppose one kilogram is X pound. Okay, that means one kilogram over X pound, this ratio should equal to this one, right? If we have X pound, we have one kilogram. And we also know that if we have one pound, we shall have 0 0.4536 kilogram, right? So according to this, we can easily solve X. X is one kilogram times one pound. over one pound times 0 0.4536 kilogram, right? And of course, all the units here can be canceled with each other. And this leaves us only a number, which is one over 0 0.45, Three, six, right? So that means one kilogram equals one over 0 0.4536 pounds, okay? So let's use this, let's put this value to substitute one kilogram here. Okay, so that means 32 milliliter per one kilogram equals 32 milliliter. We know that one kilogram is one over 0 0.4536 pound, right? Okay, so the ratio is 32 times 0 0.4536. What's unit here? The unit is milliliter per pound, right? Okay, so this is our result. Only thing we need to do is to calculate this value, which is 32 times 0 0.45 36. Okay, and it asks us to run it to nearest 0 0.1. So this is approximately 14.5. Unit is milliliters per pound. Okay. This is a final solution here. Okay, have a look at this. Any questions? As you can see here, unit conversion is very important, right? If you don't know how to convert between different units, sometimes you might kill a patient. So pay attention to this, okay? All right, no questions? Okay, let's see the next one. My boss has told me that I will need one gallon of paint for every 300 square feet 
of wool I must paint. Unfortunately, the store only sells cans containing four liters of paint and our client has told me that she needs 370 square meters of wall painting. One liter contains approximately 0.264 gallons, and there are approximately 3.28 feet in a meter. What is the smallest number of cans of paint I can buy to complete the paint job? Okay, again, this is a very practical problem. It asks us to calculate the number of cans we need, right? So how do we do this? What is the task here? Task here is to paint the 370 square meters of wall, right? Larger area of the wall, the more paint we need, right? Okay, so let's suppose We need exactly, suppose we need exactly X cans to paint the wall, okay? By exactly, I mean, of course, you can buy any number more than X, right? So first let's calculate exactly how many cans we need. So that means the total number of paint we use is right on the 370 square meters of wall, right? Okay, so one liter contains about 0 0.264 gallons. Okay, so how many paint are there in a can? Okay, we know that the store only sells cans containing four liters of paint. So one can has four liters of paint, right? That means four liters per can times number of cans here, X cans. This is a total number of liters of the paint, right? What else do we know? We also know that one gallon of paint can paint 300 square feet of wall, right? Great, so this tells us for one square feet of wall, we need how much paint? Okay, that means one gallon. One gallon per 300 square feet of wool. Okay, so this gives us for one square feet of wool, we need one over 300 gallon of paint, right? Okay. But here we only have the unit liters, right? So we need the conversion rate between gallons and liters, right? Okay, so we, we should be able to, uh, we need to know that such number of gallons equals to 
how much liters, right? Okay, so what is this information? We know that one liter equals approximately 0 0.264 gallons, right? So that means per gallon, one gallon equals one over 0 0.264 liters, right? Okay, so put this information here. We know that for such gallon, for such number of gallons, we have one over 0 0.264 times one over 300 liters, right? So that means for one square feet of wall, we need to have this number of liters of the paint, right? And how much, uh, how many square meters of wall we have? We have 370. So that means for 370, square feet of wall, we need one, zero point, 1 over 0 0.264 times 1 over 300 times 370 liters of paint, right? And this number here, this number here should equal the total number of paints in the cans, right? So this equals one over 0 0.264 times one over 300 times 370, right? Okay, then what is X here? X can be easily solved here, which is 370 Oh, sorry, we lost something here. Uh, excuse me. This is a 370 square meters, right? And here we have a different unit uh, for the areas. Okay, let's rewrite this. Okay, it should be like this. We have 370 square meters. And first of all, we need to convert it to square feet, right? So let's time, this number should time 3.28 feet per one meter squared. And then by using this, we convert the total area into square feet, right? And then times one gallon per 300 
square feet. Okay, so that means this is a total amount of gallons we need, right? And then we need to convert all the gallons to liters. Okay, we know that one liter is 0 0.264 gallons. Okay, and by using this, we convert total amount to liters. And then we also know that one can of paint is four liters, okay? Then by multiply this factor, we convert all the liters to the total number of cans, okay? So if we multiply all the numbers here, actually you can calculate this using a calculator. This is approximately 12.6 cans. Okay, so that means we need 12.6 cans. So usually we don't, uh, usually the store don't sell you 0 0.6 cans, right? They only sells integer, uh, integer number of cans. So at least we need three cans, right? So three cans at least. Okay, so, uh, sorry, 13 cans at least. So 13 is the final answer here. Okay, have a look at this. Do you have any questions? Okay, no questions. All right, let's see the next one. On planet uh, gap, two gaps are uh, worth three gifts. Two gifts are uh, worth five gops, and three gops are uh, worth two gumps. How many gumps are seven gifts worth? Okay, these are all the imaginary units, right? So let's convert. We need to use the conversion factors to turn uh, seven gips into gops, right? Okay, so the key is use conversion factors. turn seven gaps to cups. So we can do it like this. Seven gaps equals seven times one gip, one gip. And we know that one gip is three gips over two gaps, right? So it tells us three gips is two gaps. So this, Conversion factor times one gib gives us how many gibs is one gap, right? Okay, so next we can time five gobs over two gibs. 
And in this way, we can convert the value to the number of gops there, right? And it's not over yet. And then we can time the convert ratio between gops and gops. We know that two gops is three gops, right? Okay, and then as you can see here, when you cancel all the units, we have converted the seven gaps into the number of gaps there, right? Okay, so what is the number on the right hand side? This is a uh, seven times a three times five times two. And then two times two times three. Two can be canceled. And final result is 17.5. Remember here, the unit is GUPS. Okay, so that means seven gaps equals 17.5 GUPS. Conversion is done like this, okay? Any questions? No? Okay, let's see the next one. Question 12, find the number that is seven, uh, that is 60% of 250. Okay, suppose this number is X, okay? So this number is 60% times 250. So we can simply use the multiplication between 0 0.6 and 250 to find this number, right? This number is, as you can see, 150. Any questions? No? Okay, next one. What percent of 240 is 48? So suppose, The percent is X. And we know that 48 is 240 times X, and we want to find X, right? So this tells us X is 42 over 240, which is 1 over 5, which is we need to convert it to percents, right? 140 is 0 0.2 and can be converted to 20%, right? Okay, any questions? No, okay. Next one, 36 is 120% of what number? Okay, suppose this number is X and 100% of this number is 100% times this number. This is 36, right? And we want to find number X. Okay, apparently X is 36 over 100%. Okay, 100% is actually 1.2, right? Okay, so this is uh, 30, right? So the number you're looking for is 30. This is the number you're looking for. Okay, any questions? Okay, let's see the next one. When we increase 24 by 75%, what number do we get? Okay, so if you increase a number by some percent, then how do you calculate the new number? According to the definition, this is, the original number times, we increase it by 70%, right? So that means 24 times one plus 
74%, right? This is a new number, which is 42. Of course, this is a method one, right? You can also find this number according to the second method. Second method, second method is 24 is a original number, right? We increase it by 20, uh, by 75%. That means 24 increased by 70% of 24. So 70% times 24, right? The result is the same, which is also 42. So you can use either method. I strongly suggest you use the first one because sometimes it looks more simpler, right? Okay, next one. When we decrease 60%, uh, when we decrease 60 by 40%, okay? Uh, according to the first method, if we decrease the number by 40%, this is actually the original number times one minus 40%, right? And this is uh, 36. Okay, this is first method. Second method, you can think like this. 60 is a regional number. Decreased by 40% of itself. That means 40% of the original number. Again, the result is the same, which is also 36, right? Any questions? No? Okay, let's, then let's have a look at question C. Find an expression for the number that results when we increase X by K percent. So if we have an X by increase K percent, we will get X times one plus K percent. This is a new number, right? Okay. Find the expression for the number that results when we decrease x by k percent. Okay, so this means the original number decreased by k percent, one minus k percent. This is the expression, right? So next time, when you were told original number increased by k percent, this is the new number. When you were told a number that is decreased by k percent. This is a decreased new number, right? Any questions? No? Okay, let's see question 16. I need to make 450 per week. Okay, this is a requirement, right? But note that you need to pay tax based on your salary, right? Okay, so the question is, what is the smallest pre-tax weekly salary I can earn I can earn and still be able to pay my bills? So suppose I need to earn X dollars. Okay, at least, okay, at least X dollars. So that means some of my income has to be used to pay tax, right? So after paying the tax, how much do I left here? How much, how much left for me? Okay, 25% of X has been cut to pay the tax, right? So that means one minus the, 25%, this is the remaining amount of my income, right? This amount should be 450, right? Okay, so that means 0.5x is 450, which means x should equal to 450 over 0 0.75, okay? There is a trick to do this more easier. 0 0.75 is three over four, right? Divide it by three over four means times four over three, right? Okay, and then we can,
answer a three is 450 here, which is 150. 150 times a four, which is 600, right? So we need to earn at least $600 in order to pay all the bills. Okay, any questions? No, okay, let's see the next one. On, man, on Monday, Sammy, the bookkeeper, decides to increase price of avocado by 20%. On Tuesday, he increases his price by another 25. A, what percent of the original avocado price is the price of avocados after both increase? Okay. All right, let's suppose the original price is X dollars, okay? So the original price is X dollars. After the first increase, what is the new price? <clears throat> first increase is by 20%, right? So after the first increase, the price is X times one plus 20%, understand? which is 1.2x, right? So one day later, the price has been up again by another 20, 25%, right? So after the second increase, what is the price now? Note that the second increase is based on the price here, right? So that means 1.2x increased by another 25%. So the price is 1.2x times 1.25, right? Which is 1.5x. This is the latest price, right? In other words, this is a price after the second increase. So now we can see what percent of the original avocado price is the price of avocados after both increase. So this means 1.5x over the original price, right? Which is 1.5. And we need to convert it to percents, which is 150%. So that means the price has been increased 150% compared to the original price, right? So that means the price has been increased by 150% to the original price, okay? And for the second question, on Wednesday, Sammy decides to return the avocado to their original price. By what percent must he decrease the Tuesday price? Okay, so that means the original price, uh, sorry, so the price after the two increases is 1.5x. This is the latest price, right? Suppose we need to decrease. That means, okay, we need to set up a new variable here. By what percent? Okay, uh, let's see. Suppose she needs to decrease why.
y percent to the Tuesday's price. Okay, Tuesday's price is 1.5x decreased by y percent means one minus y percent, right? And this price is the original price. Original price is x, right? Because question tells us she wants to return the avocado to their original price. So after the decrease, the price should equal the original price, okay? So according to the equation, we can first cancel an x to both sides of the equation. That means 1.5 times one minus y percent is one, right? So that means one minus y percent is one over 1.5. And then we can easily solve the value of y. y percent equals one minus one over 1.5, which is approximately 33.3%, right? Okay, so that means based on the Tuesday's price, she needs to reduce 33.3% uh, of the price there to return to the original price. Understand? Okay, any questions here? No? Okay, let's see question 18. Suppose that 6% of the eighth graders and 3% of the seventh graders at Washington Junior High participate in mass counts. There are 1.5 times as many eighth, eighth graders as seventh graders at the school. What percentage of seventh and eighth graders taken together participate in mass counts? Okay, so how do we solve this question? You can use some letters to denote unknown quantities, right? Okay, so here let x denote the number of sevens greater in the school. How about that? And then we know that there are 1.5 times as many eighth graders, right? Then there are 1.5x eighth graders, right? Okay, what else do we know? We know that 6% of eighth graders participate, right? So that means 6% of One point five x, right? This is the total number of eighth graders that participate in the mass counts. And also, we know that three percent of x, 
So this is a total number of seventh graders that participate in the mass counts, right? Okay, so this is the total number of students that participate in the mass counts. So let's first calculate this number. This is a uh, 0.09x plus 0.03x, which is 0.12x, right? And this is a number. This is the total number of sevens and eighths graders that participate in mass count, right? And the question asks us a ratio between this number and the total number of students, right? Okay. So total number of students, we need to know that number. Total number of students. In this school is a total number of students of sevens and eighth graders. is x plus 1.5x, which is 2.5x, right? And the question really asks us to find the number of students participated in the mass count over the total number of students of the seventh and eighth graders, right? Which is 2.5x. So apparently this ratio is 12 by 250, which is 0 0.048. And this is 4.8%, okay? Have a look at this, any questions? No? Okay, let's see the last one. Dr. Jekyll has 180 milliliter of solution. That is 20% acid. How many milliliters of the solution must be replaced with a 100% acid solution in order to have a solution that is 30% acid? Okay, this is an unknown quantity here, right? Okay, let we use a letter X denote okay. Let's write it like this. Suppose X milliliters of the solutions of the solution must be replaced, okay? Uh, what does that mean? Originally, we have 180 milliliters, right? And after the replacement, how many left are there? 
should be 180 minus x, right? And remember, what has the acid left there? The pure acid is 20% of the original solution, right? These are, uh, this is acid that's left in the container plus X times 100%. This is a new acid from the 100% solution, right? Okay, this should equal 30% of the new solution. New solution is also 180, right? So based on this, we should be able to solve the X, right? Okay. Uh, let's have a look at this. This is uh, 36 minus 0 0.2 plus X. Uh, sorry, 0 0.2 X plus X equals 54, right? So here we can easily solve the X here. 0 0.8 X equals 118. So X is 18 times five over four, which is nine times five over two, which is 22.5. The unit is milliliters. Okay, any questions? Oh, okay, I'll upload teacher's notes onto Google Classroom for your reference. And last time, remember that I have told you that to submit your corrections onto Google Classroom as well. Neither of you have done that. So this time, please remember to submit your corrections as well, okay? Do you understand? Yeah, uh, nothing else. I just want to make sure that you have corrected all the, uh, all the questions by yourself.